Hello and welcome to this psychology topic video where we're going to look at issues, debates and evaluation within the topic of schizophrenia and in particular how to develop our evaluation by embedding the different issues and debates into different types of questions. Um, before we begin, it's always worth, uh, always useful to have sort of in the back of our mind uh, the different types of essay questions that can and can't come up in the schizophrenia topic. Now this list on screen, and feel free to pause the video at this point, isn't a complete list by any stretch of the imagination, but it does give us a nice overview of the different types of questions that could come up in this part of the course, and is certainly useful for revision. Now, as you'll be aware, the schizophrenia part of the course is, uh, is divided into six different subsections. You've got the classification and diagnosis of schizophrenia, including reliability and validity. Then you go into your biological explanations, then your psychological explanations, then your drug therapies, which is, of course, your biological treatments, CBT and family therapy and token economies, which are your psychological treatments, and then this idea of an interactionist approach, which is great. Now, what we're going to do in this particular video is talk our way through the six different parts of the specification. But as we do so, I'm going to highlight the different issues and debates that can be applied to these different parts of the course and give you some ideas of good ones to use. Um, and while doing that, then demonstrate a couple of them, how we might embed them into some evaluation points just to make them that bit more effective okay really useful tool for revision because it reduces the amount of revision you need to do because if you can insert your issues and debates into evalu evaluation paragraphs ultimately you don't have to write as many evaluation paragraphs in total so let's start by taking a look at the classification and diagnosis part of schizophrenia which is a, a fascinating part of the course now if we think about this particular part of the course the specification actually names uh, two main issues that you need to be aware of including the issue of gender bias and of course the issue of culture bias now if we just take one of them the one i think was that more it was slightly more interesting uh, in terms of culture there is an issue with the diagnosis of schizophrenia because some of the symptoms some of the positive symptoms for example things like auditory hallucinations which are a symptom of schizophrenia are viewed differently in different cultures and some cultures actually perceive hallucinations as a sign of power or as a sign of uh, a way of contacting ancestors and are not viewed the same as in western UK US in particular cultures who would view hallucinations as a positive symptom of schizophrenia okay and I've given you that example on the screen the key to this is all the way through is to consider therefore how does this cultural bias affect the validity and the reliability of the diagnosis uh, because that could become a problem when it comes to diagnosing schizophrenia accurately okay so there's your first point Let's now consider biological explanations of schizophrenia uh, and there's absolutely loads that fit in here and fit in really really nicely because if we think about biological explanations and that includes both the genetic and the neural explanations they both consider the role of nature uh, more so and, and fail to really fully consider the role of nurture okay. Furthermore, the explanations, and again, both genetic and neural, suggest that a person is determined to develop schizophrenia based upon their genetic makeup and or their levels of neurotransmitters. Uh, and closely linked to that concept, therefore, is the idea that these explanations are, of course, biologically reductionist, because what they do is they reduce a very complex series of symptoms of schizophrenia. Uh, down to the role of specific genes and or neurotransmitters, for example, things like dopamine. Uh, and what they really fail to do is acknowledge the environmental factors that may also play a role. Uh, and most psychologists now accept, and this is going to be a theme that runs through this topic, that schizophrenia is the result of an interaction between biological factors and environmental factors. Okay, So absolutely loads you can, you can pack in there. Now, if we imagine we got this question, describe and evaluate biological explanations for schizophrenia, refer to evidence in your answer. A, a simple evaluation paragraph might look like this. You might say, research support for biological explanations comes from drug trials. Uh, for example, uh, in one meta-analysis, uh, the researchers reported that 212 studies found that drug treatments are significantly more effective than, than placebos when it comes to treating both the positive and the negative symptoms uh, of schizophrenia by addressing that biological imbalance now of course that does support a biological explanation because it clearly shows that dopamine plays an important role in the development of schizophrenia that's a nice paragraph but we can take that much further using that issues and debates knowledge because what we could do is insert that uh, issue and debate and the idea say of biological reductionism into the middle of this paragraph just to really develop that paragraph much further so you could say however while critics uh, or critics argue that biological explanations in their very nature are biologically reductionist because they reduce a complex series of symptoms of schizophrenia down to the, typically the role of neurotransmitters like dopamine. 
And however, such research therefore suggests that environmental factors, or there is research, sorry, that does suggest that environmental factors also play a role. And most psychologists, as I mentioned earlier, accept that schizophrenia is the result of an interaction between biological and environmental factors. Okay, That therefore allows us to develop the conclusion much more because we can say, therefore, while drug treatments do provide some support for a biological explanation, they overstate, and that's a nice word to use, the role of biological factors and fail to consider the role of environmental factors, for example, example faulty cognitions dysfunctional families that might also play a significant role and therefore what we're doing in this paragraph is demonstrating that knowledge of the next part of the course and then the beauty is in the next part of the course we can use a similar worded paragraph but just turn it around as you'll see later on okay Let's now take a look at the psychological explanations for schizophrenia, which of course includes the family dysfunction theory uh, and cognitive explanations. Now, psychological explanations are also limited because they do the opposite. They overemphasize the role of the environment, nurture and fail to fully consider the role of biological factors, Okay, uh, the nurture aspect. Okay, But as we've literally just said, the diathesis stress model, which you'll come across later on in the course, uh, clearly suggests uh, that schizophrenia is the result of an interaction between both of those factors. Okay, So you can see how the psychological explanations are limited just in the reverse way to what we've just explored with the biological factors. Okay. Let's move on to the next part of the course, which is the drug therapies, the typical and the atypical uh, antipsychotic treatments. Now, let's try and use a different issue debate here, an equally interesting one, because drug therapies uh, take a nomothetic approach in psychology. And just to reiterate what I mean by that is they take an approach which tries to create a general law that applies to all humans. Okay, um, And the reason they do this is because they view the, the cause of schizophrenia as a biological one. And therefore, they assume that the same treatment will work for all patients of schizophrenia. And that that might not necessarily be the case okay now with that in mind drug therapies are therefore also biologically reductionist because they consider the root of the disorder as a neurochemical or genetic root uh, and therefore fail to consider how other therapies cbt or family therapies may also play an important role okay that leads us nicely and you can see therefore onto the, the the psychological therapies part and actually what we can say here is conversely psychological therapies take what we would call a more ideographic approach to treatment because the therapist considers the individual patients whether that's from the point of view of their family and dysfunctional family theories or whether that's from the point of view of their individual thought processes okay and this is of course in stark contrast to that biological explanation that we just looked at uh, which assumes that the same treatment works for all patients Let's now see how we could insert that into an evaluation paragraph. Let's imagine you've got outline and evaluate uh, CBT uh, as used for the treatment of schizophrenia. You could say, again, there is research support for the role of CBT as a long-term treatment. Uh, the NICE review found that when CBT was compared with antipsychotic medication, it was found to be more effective at reducing relapse and rehospitalization up to 18 months after the treatment. And therefore, that supports the role of CBT as an effective treatment for schizophrenia, especially in the long term. Now again, we can insert in one of those issues and debates at this particular point, and we could take that idea of an ideographic approach and say furthermore, and this becomes additional support in a way, uh, CBT takes a more ideographic approach to treatment as the therapist considers the individual patient's view, which is often seen as a strength as the individual ta uh, individual is taken into consideration. This is in stark contrast to the biological treatments, which take a nomothetic approach by using or by viewing the cause of schizophrenia as a biological one, therefore assuming that drugs would work on all patients. And again, this supports the role of CBT as an individualised and effective treatment for schizophrenia, especially in the long term. Now, while we've inserted in an issue debate here, we don't even need to stop there because we could go one step further, because as you'll probably be aware, one of the issues with research into cognitive therapies for schizophrenia is that often the, the patients that are on the cognitive therapies like CBT are at the same time also taking medication as well and that clouds the findings to a degree. So let's imagine we wanted to take this one step further and insert in a counter argument on top of that. What you could also say is however many studies that examine CBT typically examine CBT in conjunction with other biological therapies and consequently it's difficult to separate the effects of CBT and biological treatment such uh, and then Therefore, such findings need to be treated with caution. The beauty of inserting the counter argument, especially into this evaluation paragraph, is it allows us to really extend this one, one step further. Because in terms of the explanation, you can therefore say, while the research support for the role of CBT is good because it's an individualised and effective treatment for schizophrenia, such findings need to be considered with caution because there are other factors, the drug therapies, that may also be adding to the benefit of CBT uh, as a psychological treatment for schizophrenia. Okay, And you can see how we 
we really developed that evaluation paragraph now uh, and it really is an impressive sort of uh, evaluation criticism and strength at the same time okay Let's move on to our next part of the course, which is the important of, importance of the interactionist approach. And a lovely, lovely part of the course, because the interactionist approach, of course, is unique in that it acknowledges how a person requires the gene, uh, which is the nature part, and a stressor in the environment, which is the nurture. Uh, and there is research to support this idea that genes can actually influence the environment, uh, which actually makes this distinction even more complex. Uh, so so the, the interactionist approach is a really fascinating idea, because most psychologists are in agreement now that nature and nurture play a role. However, we can take that one step further and for the purpose of this webinar and to finish today, we will do that because there is research support for the diathesis stress model uh, and we could talk about that and we'll talk about that in a, in, a, in a later video. But actually what I want to show you now is how we can actually take my first point that actually this is a very, very complex debate because actually there is research that suggests that the nature element, genes, can actually have a passive influence on the environment, which becomes a really interesting concept. So let's take that first point on the screen and see exactly what I mean by that. Let's imagine you've got the question, describe and evaluate the interactionist approach to explaining and treating schizophrenia. And this becomes very much a discussion. As psychological knowledge has deepened, the nature-nurture debate has become more complex. And as a result, some research demonstrates that nature can actually affect nurture. Now, Plumin's a very, very famous psychology when it comes to behavioural genetics. Uh, and he put forward the idea of what's called passive influence, in which genetic influences on a parent's behaviour create a particular environment in which their children are raised. Now, let's put that into the context of schizophrenia. For example, parents with a gene for schizophrenia may actually create an unsettled home environment where they provide uh, conflicting and contradictory messages for their children, which, as you will probably be aware of, is the, the double bind theory. Okay. What that is essentially saying is that actually maybe it's not the genes the children inherit that is causing their schizophrenia per se, but maybe it's the genes the parents have that change the environment in which the parents create for their children, and it's that newfound environment that's actually creating and, and developing the schizophrenia, uh, and that's called passive influence. And therefore this suggests that disorders like schizophrenia may be the result of an indirect influence, and these ideas also demonstrate the interaction of nature and nurture, and actually show us how nature can actually affect nurture in an indirect way. So a fascinating idea there okay just to take that one step further now i hope you found that video useful for more videos or webinars do visit the tutor2.net site forward slash psychology forward slash events uh, do if you've got any questions queries do ask us on twitter or via our facebook groups uh, and thank you once again for watching bye bye now